Hello and welcome to Action One. Today we're going to be going over the endpoint management features that Action One has to offer. To begin, we'll start from our endpoint section where we can quickly go over at a high level the various different endpoint management features that Action One can offer you. By selecting an endpoint, we can see here that we can reboot, execute scripts, we can remotely access systems, we can deploy applications, we can deploy updates, and we can also uninstall apps as well. The main ones we're going to be focusing on today are going to be reboots, scripts, application deployments, and uninstalls, as we have other videos that correlate to updates and remote access. To perform any of these tasks, you simply need to choose the option you want to go with. We'll start with rebooting. We can see here that very simply, we can apply a custom message for the end user to see prior to the reboot occurring, as well as changing how much time the user has until said reboot occurs. You can customize this to whatever time frame that I'd like. Once I've selected that, I'm able to say next, apply this to one endpoint or multiple, and then choose when I want to execute this request. And this general cadence we see is going to be the same across all of the endpoint management features we discuss today. We can then take a look at script execution by clicking the Run Script button. From here, I'm able to see that we have the ability to run PowerShell scripts or command line scripts. If I'd like, I can type out my own script simple get process command as an example, or I can select scripts from the script library. By choosing script library here, with the text that we just selected, I'm able to see a collection of scripts that are provided by default through action one. Now with any script that I type here myself, I can save this to the script library for future use by giving this simple name and description. Then of course, as we saw earlier, we can then say next, apply this to one endpoint or many and choose when we wish to execute. We can also go down on the left-hand side here to script library and see a full collection of the various scripts that are on offer here in regards to built-in custom ones that I create myself. With these custom scripts, I'm able to also add in parameters to basically provide a field that the user has to fill out prior to skip script execution. Going back to our endpoint section, we can also take a look at the ability to deploy applications here. I can simply search for an app if I'd like. That being said, I personally find that it's easier to go to the app store and choose the apps that are here, pick as many as I'd like, um, and say deploy. So I do that, actually one's gonna load these in. I can again, specify reboot parameters, and I can choose what endpoints I want to apply this against, either through groups that I've created, or just by selecting my desired endpoints. You can also create your own applications through Action One through the use of custom apps. By creating your own application, you go to my custom app listing here, you can click this and we can see how this is broken down. You can have multiple versions over time for version auditing, as well as the ability to patch these systems. I can apply various other bits of information, such as version number, app name match, and other fields. And the actual process of uploading my applications is quite easy. Just by clicking right here, I can point to the actual one cloud and upload my executable or MSI. As you can see here, both of these are supported. And I can also upload zip archives as well that correlate for larger, more complex application deployments. On top of this, you can also tie in additional actions for reboots and scripts and various other features that we'll discuss today. From here, we can then discuss the ability to do uninstalls as well. I can select an endpoint, choose uninstall app. And from here, I'm pretty easily able to just search for the application I want to uninstall. We'll do a simple Google Chrome pull up. Actual one's gonna load in any criteria that fits here. I can choose Chrome. And we can see here, I have the ability to choose all versions or all versions that are older than a specific one or only specific versions that I wish to target. Giving me some good granular control when I'm trying to get to a certain compliance standpoint or there's say compatibility issues with certain versions. One other thing we can take a look at within the group section here, when I create a new group, you can also create uptime alerts within action one, which can be beneficial for server learning. So if I to make a server group here, I could then say notify me if the system's been offline for more than 10, 30, 60 minutes. I can go up to six months if I'd like, and also notify users when those systems have come back online as well. That being said, though, that is a good overview of the MP 
plant management features within Action 1. Thank you very much.